After hunting this area for three days, Walter once again climbs into his old man Air Elite stand. With a lot of big buck sign around the area and seeing several does each day he's hunted, Walter's confident he's in the right spot. With the rut in full swing, a good buck could appear at any moment, hot on the trail of a doe. Logging hours in the stand is the main ingredient for success, especially when whitetail bucks are chasing does. Walter has climbed 20 plus feet up this tree, hoping to keep this area scent free. The wind currents are carrying his scent back up the ridge through an area that has little or no deer travel. While watching this young buck scent trail a doe, Walter hears the unmistakable sound of deer walking in the leaves. It's a huge buck following a doe. Now this can test your nerves Walter doesn't have a good opening to shoot through. He'll have to wait, hoping for a better opportunity.
Have you ever shot a deer that good? No. <laughs> Not till now. You know and an I'm animal. Proud of him. An animal like this, he doesn't move until a rut kicks in. You don't in. see him in the daylight hours hardly at all. And when those does come in estrus, that's when he's at his most vulnerable. And we were lucky enough to take advantage of that. Well, we did it. We, we did our homework. We scouted. We found some rubs as big as our thighs, some big scrapes. And, you know, we were in a unique area. There was a little ridge there, about four or five acres, that had acorns all exactly. over it, cut over all around us. The does were using that feeding in there almost seemed like almost constantly when the rut was going on. Yep. And we saw the, actually saw the deer activity from, from some other stands that we were in, some, some uh, portable stands we had uh -huh. hung. And we moved 75 yards and got right in there where we needed to be and climb up in climbing stands. That new air lead old man is a lightweight stand and you can get up a tree. You were what, 25 feet up the tree. Oh, yeah. You picked those trees on the side of that hill and you said, let's get up here. We'll be out of the path of the deer. And deer were coming and going all around us. And you know, the bucks could come in there and run them. And, and we ended up in his path though, didn't we? Just man, I tell you what, I thought you were gonna let him hook the tree before you finally it was getting shot. Little, it was getting a little tense in there. Well, boy, that's a great hunt. And that is one super animal. I'm very, very happy. Let's join our team for an ultimate whitetail hunting tip. Harold, what in the world are you out here doing? What with a cowboy hat and sunglasses, Hollywood? You like my cowboy hat, do you? I like them sunglasses. I thought you sure you got a pair of these and you night and hell. Mossy oak camo sunglasses, polarized, non-glaring a whole bit, and I'm surprised you ain't have yours on. I probably got some that probably just didn't get to me. <laughs> I don't know about any of that, but tell me what you're doing. Checking equipment out. You know, this is new Night and Hill safety harness. I've already used this, David, and it's great. You know, I'm a little top heavy, and I was looking at a video the other day where a guy had just a regular safety belt on. First thing went down was his head. He bobbed. He bobbed, and I don't want bob. And you know, it helped him all right, but my gosh, I. I he might have died before he got straight, <laughs> straight up. Well, tell me, what's, uh, did, did your string clear it? Now, that's what I'm interested in. That's what I was out here putting these clothes on. It's a little cool today, and I was just seeing if everything fit in my deer call. Whoa, 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 what's, what's your holder here? Now, let me see that. Let me see how that thing that's works. That's a new deer call holder. I just seen if I could, it was adjusted right, and it was. You know, that's pretty slick. I guess when that old buck gets up there and you're full drawn, I can you can stop move him. him or stop him. That's what I want to do is stop him when he walks by there. I tell you what, it sacks me to shoot a deer walking. Well, I'm going to tell you that I want to know a little bit more about that deer call. Let's talk a little bit more about it. Let me take this off and show you. You know, this is a new rut and buck call and a buck and rut that we came out with this year. And I tell you what, David, we've got some of the best video to look at I've ever looked at in my life. And, and you know and I know a deer makes a clicking sound. We finally have come up with a call that you can slow down enough to make that clicking An sound. individual clicking sound. Individually clicking, like. Well, you know, the great thing about that is, is that's a call that's extra just for that small window of time when that buck's going to be in chasing that doe. That's exactly right. And you're going to need that Easy Grunner Plus for the rest of it, but that right there is a right dead in the rut buck call. And it's a real small, compact call. We're trying to make them you know, smaller and compact. It but is. it's for in close, isn't it? In close, that's what it's for. Well, you know what? That was a good piece of footage, and I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to look back at it and listen to those sounds again, and I want you to explain to me one more time. I want to hear those sounds out of that call as we listen to that buck. All right.
All right, now that we've heard that sound, Harold, make it for me exactly. That clicking sound. Boy, that's it exactly. And what you're saying in there is took, 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 took the T sound. That's right, exactly what I'm doing. Well, what other kind of little gadget you got on you out here? Man, you got an arm holder, and you got a call, and you got a harness, and what well, all you got? I've got a new accessory right here, David, that to me is the best thing since sliced bread come out. It's called a wind floater. How many times you take a little powder bottle out, and you puff it, and you see it go out just a little piece, and test paint, and it'll be gone. Your little string on your bow, I've, you've done that. You see which way the wind's blowing. But this, you can put it up in the air like that right there, let it loose, and watch it float right out. It'll tell you exactly where your wind current and wind directions is. Well, I've and let me on. tell you something else to do. It'll change in a matter of five to ten minutes some days. Well, I can see where elk hunting. That would be fantastic. Elk. What about white-tailed deer? Even more what so. about coyote? Oh, yes. My lens. I'll tell you what, I like that. That's a great idea. But I really like that deer call. Yeah, How about do. trading me something for it? Well, I would trade that for a pair of sunglasses. You liked my sunglasses, didn't you? I really did. Well, I'll tell you what, Harold. I'll trade that right there for you. Them was probably mine to begin with. Friend like you, who needs enemy? My Got you again, gosh. didn't I, bud? It's an awesome sight when a good whitetail appears coming straight to your tree stand. This buck is coming to a big red oak tree. He's probably frequented this spot several times. Little does this deer know, Chuck is waiting with his bow in hand. Odds are, this buck will be table fare for the Jones family. Well, it's just like a bow hunter to get the cart in front of the horse. That was so good. Let's take another look in slow motion. Our good friend Jim McConathy, a pro staff member from Louisiana, is an avid whitetail bow hunter. During the early archery season, Jim knows to pinpoint whitetails, a hunter must hunt close to a food source. This stand position has placed Jim on the edge of a clover field, and deer are really moving well. A front is passing through with scattered rain showers, and the barometer is changing. These are ideal hunting conditions. Several does have entered the field. Jim must stay still and remain undetected. His odds for seeing a nice buck should increase later this evening. Just as Jim had hoped, one hour later, a cool fall cloud rolls in, and with this weather change, a good buck appears.
The wind is in this hunter's favor as the deer slowly feeds within range. Every archer awaits this great moment when his heart races out of control as he waits for the perfect angle to shoot. Now's the time to draw your bow. Take careful aim. Well, sorry, Jim. That shot deserves one more look. You know, there's not much better than the awesome sight of a big white-tailed buck during the rut. Those big dark antlers, a 200-pound animal with a huge swollen neck, is enough to intimidate any deer hunter, even a seasoned veteran. Our hunting buddy, Bob Robb, is a hunter who has taken every species of big game and many in the Pope and Young trophy class. As a matter of fact, Bob has even downed a couple of record class grizzly bears with a bow. Bob is one of those guys who knows his equipment. His bow is fine-tuned, and with the help of a laser rangefinder, Bob's effective range reaches out close to 60 yards. Odds are, if a big bruiser came too close, he'll be another trophy under Mr. Rob's belt. The sight of a majestic whitetail displaying his rutting behavior is one of the reasons millions of deer enthusiasts spend countless hours trying to outwit this animal. The moment of truth finally arrives when this big nine point steps inside of 30 yards. Who knows what makes a bow hunter miss his mark? Let's just say that that's what makes this sport so humbling. A closer look shows Bob's arrow passing cleanly over the deer's back. Tough luck, Bob. On his way to the stand, shortly after the break of day, David spotted several deer leaving a field. These deer were traveling up a bottom towards a bottleneck along a creek. Well, Mr. Hale made a big circle and used the creek to sneak to the edge of the field. Talk about a well-executed plan. Our hunter is just getting set up when the white tails appear, and the rest is, well, let's take a look.
In all the excitement, David overdraws his bow and his arrow falls off the rest. Hold on, David. Maybe he'll look the other way. David, we need to finish this video up. Where's Harold? Where'd he go? Listen, he's right up around that outhouse. And what I want you to do is you take that corn cob and knock the rest of that corn off. <laughs> Doggy. And I'm gonna go up there and give him some paperwork. You know, no job done until the paperwork's done. <laughs> Where y'all come from, boy? Hey, Harold, we've always been told that uh, the job was never complete until the paperwork was done, and Chuck and I brought you some paper. <laughs> Let me tell y'all boys something. Y'all way behind on this. This guy had every I dotted T crossed. He had a bucket full in there. <laughs> he had Here, a bucket take full that in save him for yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Harold, looks to me like that old outhouse right there has a dual purpose. It might make a pretty good tree stand, might it? Yeah, uh -huh. looks is it airtight, Harold? No, she's pretty windy, I can tell you, boy. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. The guy that owned this outhouse had to be superstitious. He had a two horse shoe on. How would you look at that? Well, you know what they always told me about superstition? It's bad luck to be superstitious. What about me? <laughs> well, anyway, you know, I was thinking back, uh, speaking of the speaking of outhouse and a, and a tree stand, uh, we had a great year this year in deer hunting. And when I look back on it, there's a lot of good things happening. We captured you guys missing. Mm -hmm. We, uh, you guys missing Harold and I have ordered you some arrows about what two inches long? At right? least two inches long. Oh, yeah. you have? Well, that's pretty thoughtful of you, but I'm ahead of you. I don't cut my bow back by three <laughs> inches. Well, you need to do something. I can tell you that. <laughs> you know, if I'm talking about arrows, I was riding old Chuck over there and looked on the seat and there was a toothbrush, and it had dirt all over the end. And he always, always check his broad heads to come in and see if any dirt on. I noticed there wasn't much dirt on at the end of the season. Jones, you been cleaning your broad heads? <laughs> no, that's my little girl's toothbrush. Uh -huh. Now he's been holding out on his head, not he? <laughs> well, guys, you know what? We had a we, there was a lot of good things that came out of this year's videos, other than the clowns that you were missing. We captured on a piece of footage of uh, that old buck out there grunting and made a deer call out of it. And I think that's going to revolutionize deer calling to some extent. Y'all have nailed that sound. That is going to be one unbelievable deer call. You know what was impressive about that whole hunt too? Besides the sound, I, that, I was really impressed with that. But old Walter. Didn't shoot the deer. You held him down to where he didn't shoot it. That's a bad case of buck fever he had, one. <laughs> well, you know, guys, we may be at the end of this video, but I'm thinking about the beginning of another one. We actually start our fifth series of the uh, ultimate uh, white, uh, ultimate spring turkey, and I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. What's coming up on this one? Well, you know, we're going to do basically the same stuff, yeah. but we're going to hunt with pro staffers that we hadn't hunted with, cover a bunch of states, and what's exciting, we've got uh, some hunts with kids coming up this we year. We have got some hunts with uh, some kids and uh, Jake's, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm excited about wanting to go with them because I'd rather hunt with them, I'll be honest with you, than anybody. I mean, I love to hunt these kids. Well, that's that's our future, and we need to realize that. Well, I'll tell you what, Chuck. I'm going to leave the caption of the hits up to you, the misses up to Chuck <laughs> Harold, and we're going to let him introduce the kids to the old lucky outhouse. What do you think about that? Sounds like, do you think I ought to put a corn cob in there? <laughs> I imagine there's already a bucket full in there, according to Harold folks. On behalf of Harold Knight, Chuck Jones, I'm David Hale. We appreciate your support on our videos. See you next time on a brand new Ultimate Series. Here are some of the fine outfitters the Knight and Hale team recommend for quality whitetail hunting.
For you hunters interested in building your own food plots, nothing is better than deer formulated oats as an annual cover crop. These oats are loaded with protein and their tenderness as a winter crop makes it Night and Hale's favorite choice. Contact John Butler at Arkansas County Seed Company, P.O. Box 43, Stuttgart, Arkansas, or call 501-673-2706. For a perennial food source, Night and Hale recommends an Australian prairie grass called Matua. With protein reaching 33%, nothing attracts deer better than Matua. Contact Danny Io of Berenberg, USA, 8855 Play Seed Road, Maurice, Louisiana, 70555, or call 318-983-0988, or check with your local co-op for Matua Grass.